All right, well, I got most of the work done now. I'm still building a couple extra windows, 10 VMs, because I want to try to put this under a heavier load than I currently am. But I did edit the build video of me putting together the server. Edit. <laughs> Basically taking clips and gluing them together. But, you know, it's, it's technically video editing, so... Yeah. <laughs> but, um... A little bit of disappointment so far. The fan in that is uh, pretty loud. I may be able to force it to run quieter, but I don't think that's going to be good for the hardware. Right now it's at 50% speed, which is 2500 RPM. From what I can tell, it is a standard 4-pin fan, so if you were to use this as a desktop and a server at the same time, then Maybe you could replace the fan with something a little bit nicer, but I would almost just say that uh, it'd be easier to put it in another room and run run cables to the monitors and USB. I opted to not put a sound card into this like I was originally tempted to do because I realized that these newer Dell USB sound bars would solve that problem. So I have audio capabilities without sound card, which is fantastic. And I only have two USB 3 ports because that was just the card I had handy that I knew would work. I have a four port USB 3.0 card, but I believe it's dead. And um, I'm using the built-in hubs on the monitors. I wanted to use matching monitors, but I only have one of that particular model of I think that's a 22 inch um, with the built-in USB 3 hub so I'm using the hub on that one for my keyboard and mouse and then I'm using the hub on that one so I can plug in external stuff and then I'm if I want to get fancy I could get one of those um, cables that have a it's basically an extension cable with a base kind of like what your USB wireless adapters use but yeah, so it's it's doing some work right now. The let's see, the GPU is not on the heaviest of load. I'm using Windows Photo Editor, so it's not not very optimized, I'd say, for maxing out system resources. But it's putting looks like around a forty percent load on the GPU and another. 50% on the 8 core CPU I allocated. I'm just building some throwaway VMs on my ESXi box. Let's see here. Currently I'm using 7.8 gigahertz of my 33.6 gigahertz of total CPU power. Just under 25%. I do have two additional Windows 10 virtual machines and then TrueNAS is running on this as well. So these two monitors are attached to one virtual machine, which is the 1070 that's being passed through. So I have physical access to a virtual machine rather than having a remote into it. I built a 10 Home one and then I realized Home doesn't support remote desktops, so I'm building a 10 Pro one now too, just so I can remote into it and use multiple computers at the same time on this uh, server. But I'm going to let the video of me building it finish doing its thing and then I think I will do some benchmarks and stuff. Alright, well, I'm starting to get ready to run Heaven Benchmark and I probably won't have GPU-Z overlaid because I'm just going to time-lapse the benchmark, but It'll be interesting to see how things score.
so I just got done running Heaven Benchmark. The score is not quite as good as it should be, but there is a variety of reasons between um, virtualization settings, and then I was using OBS to screen record. So, not perfect, but still I think a decent score considering. So now I'm going to run Cinebench. This should be a pretty straightforward test. I'm curious to see where it's going to score in relation to the comparative scores on the side of the screen. But I will uh, time lapse the process and run the multi core test. I don't think I'm going to bother with single core since that's usually not too exciting. All right, well, that test is done, and it's a bit longer of a wait for me than it was for you since I sped it up. <laughs> but, uh, ouch, <laughs> that is rough. It did worse than a uh, 11th gen mobile i7. It did worse than a uh, 4th gen uh, 4850HQ, which 50HQ. I want to say that's a mobile, but that's not. That might be one of the uh, oddball enthusiast i7s. But uh, yeah, it's not too surprising though, being that this is such low core speed. I was kind of keeping an eye on the uh, ESXi web interface, and I'm not over provisioned on my CPUs, so. There's still plenty of megahertz available for the other VMs, but uh, yeah, it just uh, didn't score very well. But yeah, so I guess off to the next test. All right, so back to the tripod mount. I have a handful of VMs running now, along with some other tasks. On the monitors, as you'll see, this system is pretty loaded. I have folding at home running right now on a full full power. And that little window down there, which I'll zoom into, that is one of the other virtual machines, which is also running folding at home at full power with CPU only. And then on the laptop, I've remoted into one of the virtual machines and it is currently copying 150 gigabytes worth of files. Focus. Focus. There we go. And one of the downfalls I'm finding is since I'm using hard drives, the speeds aren't the best because it has to read off the hard drives, send it over the network, and then back into the server. So that's causing some latency issues, but that's to be expected considering that 
I have hard drives in this and the fact that it has to go in and out of the system to copy. But overall, quite a capable machine. The Cinebench benchmark was admittedly a little disappointing. The Heaven benchmark was as to be expected, considering I was running that while I was recording with OBS on the same machine. I did try some gaming. I was going to include that, but it wasn't particularly interesting, so I decided to leave that out. But I did a fantastic job playing Rocket League, which is also to be expected. The noise level stayed about the same, and currently with its load... Yeah, it's been drawing about a consistent 400 watts. And I basically have the CPUs under a 75% load, according to ESXi. So quite a capable machine. I would say if you're going to keep it in the same room that you're going to be in, you might want to find a way to muffle the noise or replace the fans. This config could have been built upon a little bit better as I was just grabbing spare parts. What would be really nice, depending on the amount of storage you need, is fill all 16 of those bays with uh, affordable SSDs. You can pick up like 18 gig, I'm sorry, 18 gig, a uh, 480 gig uh, Intel data center drives, really cheap. And 16 of those, you can do maybe dual RAID 50s if you wanted, if you're feeling, feeling crazy. It would give you a ton of space to work with. Plus, then on top of that, for me, I'd remove the DVD drive. I'd remove these blanks. And you can get a three, five and a quarter inch drive bay to four, three and a half inch drive bay adapter. And then you could put some larger uh, three and a half inch drives maybe throw a couple four terabyte drives up top with uh, RAID 5 give yourself a nice little eight terabytes of bulk storage you would have to add an additional hard drive controller unless you can use the onboard I'm not sure if the onboard SAS connector is fed off the H710 or not that's not something I've experienced with unfortunately but overall you know if you're not doing anything too hardcore this is quite the setup. It'd be pricey. Um, considering, I believe I figured... Well, actually, let me find my notes. So yeah, I figured this setup would be somewhere around $1,000 without the hard drives. I would say... If you did some better CPUs, some SSDs, and then some bulk storage, you could build something for around $2,000. That would not only be your computer, but your VMware test box, or whichever hypervisor you prefer, your bulk file storage, kind of one and everything. But yeah, this is a fun project. I'm really happy with how it turned out. There were some struggles. Uh, ironically, the uh, struggles had nothing to do with the server, but after I got set up and I started hooking up the monitors, I found out one of my DisplayPort cables was bad, and that was causing the Windows install to blue screen constantly, and it was aggravating because <laughs> I couldn't figure out what was going on. And then finally, I, I somehow, just kind of dumb luck, I guess, realized the DisplayPort cable, and that, that cable got to snip snip, and it went straight to the scrap bin because, yeah. I hate DisplayPort. <laughs> Full-size DisplayPort. At least I don't have much experience with mini DisplayPort. I have a feeling it's slightly better, but um, yeah, overall, it was a fun project. Definitely uh, worth pursuing. And you probably could do it for a little less. It's just this particular config is pretty hard to find, from what I could see. If you got the alternative, which would be the eight. Uh, LFF bay chassis, which would allow you to put eight three and a half inch drives down here, and then you could get some adapters that would honestly uh, the reverse in some ways would be better because you put more drives in total. But you can get adapters that'll convert a single five and a quarter inch drive bay into eight 
two and a half inch drives and you could really really go to town that way you could put 24 ssds in here and then another eight three and a half inch high capacity drives granted it's older hardware but you know if you're not doing anything crazy i mean a lot of people overestimate how much they need unless you're like a hardcore gamer but yeah hopefully that's interesting thanks for watching